Hi, everybody. Mr. Weinberger. I don't know about you, but I love games. Playing great games is one of my all-time favorite things to do with my friends. Sometimes I have people come over to play games, and I want to make sure everyone has some dice to use. And I have this great bunch of dice. Let's use some math to figure out how many dice to give each of my friends. In my pile here, I have 34 dice. I have three friends coming over. That's plus me, so that's four of us. I want to divide the dice up so that everyone gets the same. Okay, I'm done. Each of us will get eight dice. And there are two left over. That took a little longer than I expected, but what if I had started with a hundred dice or a thousand? I may need to learn some math so I don't have to count all these out by hand next time. The operation we're learning about today is called division. Division means separating a quantity in groups. If you've ever shared candy, dealt cards, or separated things into piles, you've done division. Let's take this example with the dice. I had 34 dice and I was dividing those dice into four groups. So that's 34 divided by four. And that equals eight with two remaining. Here are some simpler examples. Six divided by three equals two. 10 divided by two equals five. 20 divided by five equals four. You could also think about this in terms of multiplication. 20 equals five times four. If you have a problem, 20 divided by five, you can ask yourself, what would I need to multiply by five to get 20? Or you could ask yourself, if I were to count by fives, how many steps would it take for me to count to 20? One of the cool things about division is that there are a lot of ways to think about it. And one thing you'll want to do is figure out which way of thinking works best for you. Going back to that example, 20 divided by 5 equals 4. There are some special math words to use to describe the parts of that equation. 20 is the dividend, 5 is the divisor, and 4 is the quotient. The number being divided is the dividend, the number we divide by is the divisor, and the answer is the quotient. Let's talk about two easy strategies, ones I've already mentioned that can help you with simple division problems. Here's a situation. You and three friends have started an after-school business. You're raking yards in your neighborhood. At the end of the day, you want to split the money evenly. Since everyone worked all day, everyone should get an even share of the money you earned. If the four of you made $24, this would be a pretty easy division problem. You can write the problem like this. 24 divided by four equals what? In this case, you're trying to find the quotient. You could use multiplication to solve this problem. Ask yourself, four times what equals 24? Do you have an answer? Sure, four times six equals 24. If this is a fact you know, then it will be in your head already. You each pocket $6 and you're done. Let's model that visually with some base 10 blocks. Here's one group of four. Here's a second group of four. Now I have a total of eight blocks. I'll keep adding groups of four. Until I have 24 blocks. If I divide 24 into groups of four, how many groups do I have? 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. You could also do what I call step counting. I need to divide 24 by 4, so I could figure this out by counting by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. I counted 6 times, so 24 divided by 4 is 6. But what if our group of leaf rakers had an awesome day and made $72? When I say four times what equals 72, that doesn't help. I don't know that off the top of my head. I could count by fours, but that's going to take a while. A different approach would be to use what's called the area model. We know that you can find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the length and the width. So, we can imagine a division problem as a rectangle where we know the area and one side. That might sound confusing, but once we practice a few times, I think it'll be easier. In the case of our leaf raking team, the area of the rectangle is 72. One side is four. When we figure out the other side, we would know the number you multiply by four to get 72. Ha, that's division. I don't know the answer right off, so I'm gonna think of a number that I know will be a safe one. A number I know you could multiply by four that would be less than 72. Let's just start with 10. Four times 10 is 40. I'll write that number in my rectangle. If my total area is 72, this takes up a little more than half of my rectangle. So how much area do I have left to cover? Well, 72 minus 40 would give me that. I've got 32 left to cover. Is there a number I could multiply by four to get 32? Totally, eight. Eight times four is 32. I'll write eight on top here. My first guess was 10, and that took up just over half the space. My second guess was eight. When I add those together, I get the full length of the side. 10 plus eight is 18. At the end of the day, each person in Team Leaf makes 18 bucks. It's not a bad chunk of change. What if we wanted to make the work easier and get two more friends in our leaf raking crew? How much would each person have made on that $72 day? We'll set this one up the same way. Draw the rectangle, put six on one side. What's a number you could multiply by six and get an answer less than 72? Let's try for the easy one first and go with 10. Six times 10 is 60. That's most of the rectangle. I'll write 10 up here at the top, and just to be fun, I'll shade in most of my rectangle. When I subtract 60 from 72, I get 12. That's the area of that last little section. What do I multiply with 6 to get 12? Hmm. 2, of course. So, the length of that side of that section is 2. When I add 2 and 10, I get 12. If I have 6 people in my leaf raking team, we will each bring home $12 at the end of the day. It'll be less work, but we'll also make less money. Let's try one more, and for this one, we'll try to make it more difficult. In my classroom, I had students working in teams. There were six students in each team. I had them working on their estimating skills, so I put a big bowl of gumballs in the middle of the room. The team that came up with the closest estimation for how many gumballs were in the bowl got to keep all the gumballs. Claire's team came closest to the correct answer, which was 702, so they got to split up that big bowl of gumballs. How could Claire figure out how many gumballs to give each member of her team? Sure. 
You could count them out like this. One for you, and one for you, and one for you, and that's 702. Wait, we missed recess. You could try skip counting. Six, 12, 18, 24, but after about 60, I start getting confused. So, let's try the area model. Here's my rectangle. I know that one side is six, and that the total area is 702. What's a safe number to use that's pretty big? We could try 10. That would give us 60. Probably not the best considering we have 702 gumballs. We could try uh, 50. Six times 50 is 300. Let's do that. We know the length of this part of the rectangle is 50 which gives us an area of that part of 300. Hey, let's just do that again. 50 more on top for another area of 300. 300 plus 300 is 600. So this last part here has an area of 102. Let's try 10 now. Six times 10 is 60. That leaves us 102 minus 10, oh, a 60. Okay, 42. Six times what is 42? Seven. Six times seven is 42. When I add up the numbers across the top, I get 50 plus 50, that's 100, plus 10, that's 110, plus seven, my total is 117. Claire should give each member of her team 117 gumballs. That's a lot of gum. Today, we learned some valuable lessons about dice, leaf raking money, and gumballs. It's all about the division. There are some simple methods you can try, like turning your division problem into a multiplication problem, or step counting. Another strategy to try is the area model. All of those strategies will get you to the correct answer, so it's up to you to pick the right one that works for you and for your situation.